guys, welcome back to the Beyond Football podcast. I'm excited to have Big Baller here, Newcastle's latest signing, England international, Matt Bonzo. Bro, thanks for jumping on, bro. No problem, man. Good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, it's good. We're going to obviously give you guys an insight into just how it is being an up-and-coming baller into the journey of a footballer moving abroad like at a young age and just uh, how it is behind the scenes. So you already know the vibes that like, let's go all the way to the back. Or yeah. all the way to the start. Like, where did it where did it all start, bro? Was it was it always a dream? Um, I'd say so. I'd say so. Obviously, I've got an older brother. Um, so he was probably the person that I first started playing football with. Um like just like you know in the house in the garden things like that um and obviously like my dad he's like quite a big football fan as well so like ever since I was young like I've grown up around football mm. um so yeah that's probably how it started off for me in terms of me like getting interested in it and things like that calm so what what age did you actually start playing in that um I think I must have been about six six something like that five six years old um I probably first started playing like in terms of like with other people probably like at school um just like at break time and lunch time things like that you know yeah, like that was yeah 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 that that was probably like the the first time I was playing against like people you know like obviously like when I was playing against my brother and that like you know because he's older than me and I was like a little kid at the time you know he'd he wouldn't take me serious you know because yeah. he was he had like his own, he was at his own stage, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was probably I was about five or six at school, and then I ended up joining a team, um, a Sunday league team that was with um, a lot of my schoolmates. A lot of my schoolmates were in this team. Um, and that was like the first time I joined the team. And yeah, I was there for about two or three years, I think. Yeah. Um, so so it all started Sunday league. That's how it yeah. starts for most people. So you didn't go straight into like a academy or anything. It was nah, the not pretty. Yeah, yeah. Not I, I was I was at Sunday League for a good it was at least two years. And I ended up getting scouted by Forrest at a tournament, you know, like you know them ones that you have at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, like where there's teams from everywhere coming to play. I ended up getting scouted at one of those. Um and I think that season, the season I got scouted, I ended up like doing a mix of both, you know? So I was doing, some days I was training with like the boys at Forest. Um, and some days I was just training with my Sunday league team, you know, because like, mm. I think it was, I think it was my dad, you know, he was really big on me, you know, not not joining an academy like too soon because he didn't want me to like, yeah, he didn't yeah, want me to like, he didn't want me to like be so serious about football too soon you know like he mm-hmm. didn't want me to yeah. uh, like fall out of love before I actually got the chance to like enjoy it you know like he wanted me to yeah. enjoy it a little bit more. that's good but, man because you know there's parents out there that obviously they force their children into the academy yeah, system exactly. they obviously, yeah. obviously you had all your friends at the Sunday League club and mm, exactly. you didn't want to your dad did the right thing with obviously not taking away from yeah. your friends like missing out on that good childhood experience. Yeah, that. yeah exactly. And it's like it's like with anyone, you know, like or with anything even. Um, like if you join like a like a new school or you join a new team, you know, you're not gonna know anyone. So like mm. it's gonna be more difficult. Like he didn't want me to like go through that like at too young of age where I couldn't really deal with it, you know. So um yeah, that was yeah. So I had to like split both of them for for about a season before I ended up joining Forest, I think I must I would have mm. been about eight or nine years old at the time when I joined Forest. So, yeah, that's, that's decent. That's still quite young as well. So, it like, is, that's it that's is. the that's the first time I've heard of someone obviously like splitting it like the Sunday yeah. League the Academy. It's mad how your your dad obviously clearly knows the game of like what mm. it can do because obviously Definitely. most parents would just be like, "What? My son's yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah. My son's exactly. gone." He's not coming exactly. back here. They, they hear they hear a club's interest in them, like, yeah, you're there. You're going there. That's what they do. That's, but That's really good, man. 
Yeah. But obviously, into the academy system at the age of nine now, that's that's big. Like, how was it? How was it for you? Like, in terms of obviously those friends you had that like, paid for the school team and that like, leaving them and that like, going on. Like, how was that when they call you big time at that young age? Yeah, yeah, you know, it was it was weird because like obviously like there were there were other like decent players, you know, like in the team and things like that. You know, like obviously non. None were like, none unfortunately were like ever good enough to like go to academies, but um, there were still like a few decent players, and it was a little bit weird to me, you know, because at the end of the day, like they're they're still all my friends, they're all my boys, and that you know, so mm. I'm not. It's not like they they were like they were happy for me, I could tell, but at the same time, like I kind of felt like a little bit of like a responsibility, you know, because they. Mm-hmm. Even though, even though, like it sounds silly, but even though I was like nine years old at the time, like they still like looked up to me because I was playing for Nottingham Forest, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of them because I was from Nottingham and all of them are from Nottingham. A lot of them supported Forest and that as well. So to have one of your friends playing for that team, it's like a big thing. So like yeah, it was it was it was a uh, it was like a good feeling. It was a good feeling. <laughs> So at yeah, such a young age, you're what you're nine now, you're just a guy in yeah. the ends. Exactly. Matty Bonzo. <laughs> exactly. Guy in Nottingham. <laughs> no, that's yeah, mad. man. So going going through like so being at the academy, like how is it being obviously from like such a young age at like, nine and that like the transition from Sunday League to the academy? Did you did you struggle with that? Even though you, even though you had that like smooth transition, like a season, like yeah, I was that. I think I didn't find it too hard. I think maybe like the first like few weeks, you know, like because everyone there, like they all knew each other and things like that. So like it took me like a little bit of time to like integrate with the team and that. Um, but I didn't find it too difficult. I think I was around like good people that made it easy for me, especially like at the start, like you know. And I wasn't like rushed or forced into anything. You know? Like that's the thing with kids these days. Like a lot of nine, eight, nine year olds, you know, as soon as they join an academy, there there's loads of things like forced upon them. Like yeah. when I joined, yeah, when I joined Forest, like it wasn't, it wasn't like that, you know. I it was like, yeah, go at your own spit, go at your own pace, you know. Like Sunday League is different to academy football, so you're not gonna get it straight away. But um, yeah, I I um I managed to. I managed to find it like not not too difficult the transition. No, that's good to hear, bro. It's good yeah. to hear that obviously teams are teams are doing that and they're not forcing like young guys to obviously uh, leave what they have and just obviously get into that system because there's been loads of stuff like I know like the system once you get into that academy system from that young age, just like for like the rest of your year, the next ten years you're in that bubble. Exactly. You know, exactly. So what you experienced in like your Sunday league team, like obviously not not having the same funding, not the same environment, yeah, having like easy. different guys who are from different experiences. That like, once you get into that academy system, you don't have that. You're in a bubble now. That like, exactly. For you. Back then, how was it? Like, did you get like all your boots done, kit done? Um, yeah, like, like it was little things like that. You know, like I think. The biggest thing for me was probably like the the discipline that came with academy football, you know. So mm. at Forest, it was black boots, shirt tucked in, things like that, you know. Like that probably, you know, as a kid, like you don't really feel like that. I think that was part of the reason why my dad probably wanted me to hold back a little bit as well, you know, because mm. that's that's another re- that's another point of of it, you know. You've got to have black boots. Your boots have got to be clean. Your shirt's got to be tucked in. Um, mm. You gotta show respect to all the coaches, things like that. You know, like the from what the, so coach. from that young age, they're already yeah. instilling those. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like they're instilling the work, like the the characteristics you need to obviously be in the workforce from that young age. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. Like, that's that's how like, it was. You know, it's like, the same way. It's it obviously like the same way they like in school they teach you how to obviously write the date on top of the on top of yeah, your yeah. each page and everything. So that's just mad. like that, just like that. And the thing with that is that like, it's so, like people listen to this, they'll it'll sound like crazy, like oh, they had to do this, this, and this, like show discipline. But the thing, the thing about it is like once you do it for a certain amount of time, like it just becomes like part of your routine, it's just natural, yeah. you know. So, like, it's like with anything, you know, if you do it long enough, 
for a certain amount of time like it'll be you'll just forget like you're even doing it. you'll just do it subconsciously you know but yeah that was that was part of it that was that was probably the biggest thing between Sunday league and academy football that I noticed yeah that's good man but what yeah. do you think about the notion that obviously these academies and everything like the whole football system what do you think about the idea that it's all like a marketing business so obviously the way that you said the discipline yeah. They're obviously breeding the young players and the younger generation to yeah. obviously think in a certain way to meet their needs in the future. To obviously mm. make, what do you think about that? It's mad, bro. Because yeah, I think I I see both sides of it. You know, I understand people that say like like parents and like academies, like young use kid, um, young use kids. You know, use young kids, <laughs> um. Uh, use younger kids like to like make money or market off something like this and but also like you've got to see the point like without like it's like with a lot of players you know like without academies and things like that like we wouldn't be as good as what what we are today you know because the fact of the matter is that academy coaching and things like that like yeah it's 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 like got its like discipline like I was talking about but also like the quality of it is better than what you're going to get at Sunday League you know because mm-hmm. Sunday League is Sunday League is like pe- the parent of one of the players you know taking time out of their weekend just to yeah, yeah, coach yeah. Bunch of kids you know like that's what Sunday League is whereas academy coaches are full-time guys they know what they're doing things like that so I understand I understand both sides of it but at the end of the day you know you've got to think like there are benefits to it as well so yeah, yeah. I hear it, I hear it. That's obviously giving me a new view on it because obviously when you deepen that, obviously the academy's the system that uses players to obviously feel the benefit yeah. for the future. But in the same time, they're they're providing quality, they're providing a chance for people to change their lives. So when you deepen yeah. like that, it's yeah, it's mad. Yeah, definitely, man. No, because a lot of people just go on about how um that being in the system, the system is rigged, only 1% make it and that, but yeah. when you see it, like, if you deeper that, like, it's true that like, it can be, it's like, the disparity is mad, but they do provide a, a mad lifestyle for young players, to be honest, and the opportunity. Yeah. True, yeah. It's just that the chances are not that high. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly that. So going, obviously, next, so you're through the academy now, like mm-hmm. growing up through the academy system and that did you did you have any struggles or like setbacks um I wouldn't I wouldn't say I had like any like really big ones you know like nothing that no one else would have gone through um I'd say when I the probably the biggest challenge for me was probably like myself in terms of when I was like a lot younger I used to be like quite a I used to be like quite emotional, you know, like, so if something didn't go, if something didn't go my way, like I'd get angry, things like that, you know, like, and that obviously is something that can hold you back if like it's taken the wrong way. You that's, know? Ex- but, that's exactly, that's exactly how I was when I was younger as well. Yeah, yeah. So you get it, you get it. You get um, it, bro, because you see when I was being a goalkeeper, you know, when I was younger, yeah. I used to get so obviously emotional and the fact of yeah. like conceding, conceding and that, that, yeah, and that exactly. will affect you. Oh, yeah, exactly. but yeah, and it, it's not just in like it's not just in matches as well. It's in training sessions as well. You know, like mm-hmm. sometimes like that was probably that was probably my biggest challenge was just to like you know making sure like the, the men- mentally that I was doing the right things. You know, because it's because you know it's e- like you you'll understand when I say this. Like it's easy to just if you you know that like, if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person, you know, like yeah, yeah, like, yeah like be the end of your like football career just like that so like and I mean it's the same with a lot of things you know like if you say something wrong to like your coach or your boss or whatever like it could it could end your what you're doing like there and then so like that was yeah. probably the biggest thing for me so what you said you used to chat back and what I'd sometimes sometimes <laughs> like, there was this there was this one situation yeah where um I would have been I was I was older at this time as well I think I was about 13 13 14 mm. um and we were doing and i'd been i was we were that was at the age where you know like 
the under like 13s would train at like, the same size as the under 16. So like you'd just be all in a big group. Oh and yeah, just be, yeah. Like, groups in that. And we were doing one v ones, and I was against this. Like he was a top player, under 16 as well. So he was like three years older than me. And we're doing 1v1s, right? And I was like, I was holding my own. I was doing all right, yeah. Yeah, and, okay. And the, and he, he beat me. He beat me a couple of times, obviously. And one time he beat me, yeah, the coach is like, the coach started getting onto me. Like, he was like, how are you letting him beat you? Things like that, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know. And yeah. I've, I've gone back and I've said, he's like, He's three years older than me. Like, I've I'm doing my best. I've I've won the ball back like a couple of times from him as well, you know. And you haven't said anything to me. Like, why you and I'm the younger guy, you know. You should, if anything, you should be giving yeah. me more praise. And that was that was probably the the one situation I remember because after that, I was I was head loss really. Like, I I think no, I think I, 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 I don't might, think I don't I think you're the wrong to say that though. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I might not have been the wrong, but, you know, like, at the end of the day, you're not really supposed to talk back to anyone, yeah, you know, but I you. even even if you're in the right or the wrong, but because I remember I, I ended up, I walked, I walked off, I walked off the session after that. Like, it was, like, it was towards the end anyway, but I walked out of the session because I, I knew, like, if I stay here, I'm going to say something stupid and mm -hmm. I'm going to regret it for, like, the rest of my life. So I ended up walking on a session and one of and a different coach, like, he saw me walk off. So, like, he gave me, like, five minutes. And then he just came to talk to me and just explained to me, like, you know, like, the not the reasons why the guy was saying it, but, like, just explaining to me, like, how I should have dealt with it or how I could have dealt with it better, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's one thing I'll definitely remember. That's one thing I'll always remember. Yeah, that's calm, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, they, they didn't do anything to you? after that nah nah like that was that was on that was on the tuesday we were next in on the thursday and it was all forgotten about by then like just like a quick apology and then everyone moved on so yeah <laughs> so what you didn't have any like injuries growing up like um, when you were younger like maybe like you when you were 10 like 10 to like 10. i had i had um I had Osgood Schlatters, you know, you know that thing where you get on your knee, like yeah. a little, like, I had that, um, so that kept me out for like a few, maybe like six weeks, something like that, but I never had like a really serious injury, um, thankfully, so like, fortunately, like, I know a lot of people, like, played with a lot of people that have had like serious injuries when they're young, but fortunately for me, I never, I never had anything like that, so yeah, I'm, I'm blessed in that department, yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. So, uh, mm. like, how was it? You see, going obviously from being at academy system from the age of nine. So you've already explained how like your dad was really like good with managing you and that. So, would it, so there wasn't any, any like pressure since you were in the academy system. Now, was there any like pressure you mean like, like from them? Like, oh yeah, you have this chance like to make it this and that. Nah, nah, I never, I never really had pressure like that. Um, like I said before, like I had a lot of good people around me um like my mom and my dad and also I think it helped because my brother was also like in an academy um he's he's five years older than me so when I was like when I first joined the academy he'd he's he'd been there for at least a good two three years you know so like they knew how to deal with it and things like yeah, that that's good um, so yeah, what so, so they already was... know like so they've been through it once so they know now yeah. like, they can learn from that that's good yeah, yeah, they knew how to deal with like everything, you know, like from from you know like the player review meetings. They knew how to deal with them, and to, up until like you know, say like if I thought I had a bad game, you know, they knew how to like talk to me about it and things like that, you know. So but that's that's yeah. good. definitely. But then, what was the schedule like though back then? Like, well, at at that point, did you did you think like, oh, football's the only thing I want to do? Uh, maybe when you're like nine, when you're like 12, 11, at that point, yeah, I'd probably like, say, yeah, yeah, I'd probably say it was around that age, you know, like when I was like, when I was like, when I first joined, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, you know, okay, now, now I'm here, this is all I want to do. I probably, it took me maybe like a year or two to think, yeah, this mm. is, this is what I want to do. I want to be a, like a, I don't, I always wanted to be a footballer, but, but up until like, 10 years old I would say like you know after after like I turned like 10 11 blah 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 
that was probably when I was like, yeah, this is all I want to do. Now I'm going to focus on, on stuff like that. So I think, I think for me, the, the biggest, the biggest thing was probably we had the retain and release stuff at the end yeah, of yeah. the tens or something. And I think seeing, I don't think I realized like how big of a deal getting released was until I saw like my mates so, getting released. So they had retaining releases like back then and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. it was, I, I, I remember it specifically. We were doing, we were doing futsal and, um, and I think everyone got handed letters. Like obviously like people had been, the people that were getting released had been told like before, but everyone had to get like letters, like as a, like a formality. And I don't think I realized how big of a deal like getting released was until I saw like my mates, you know, like knowing that I wouldn't be able to play with them again because they're getting released and stuff like that. That was probably the moment I was like, yeah, right. I need to like work hard and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so deep. At that young age, like you're just like raw. Exactly. exactly. So it's already like, so at such a young age, it's already ingrained in you. Like, listen, you're fighting for your sport. This is yeah. like, this is a yeah. serious thing. So exactly. it's a thing yeah. where like you, you have to you have to grow up quick and learn that discipline. Hundred, like, yeah, man. Because it's like, oh, if you don't work hard, if you don't, boom, your dream's gone. Exactly, exactly. But it's mad because obviously those guys, man. For example, their parents of the guys who got released, you know, their parents might have like put so much pressure on them at such a young yeah. age to obviously perform yeah. this and that. Now they're getting released and now they would feel like so bad because obviously their parents have put so much pressure on them and everything. Yeah. And if they do end up not making it, like over the years, they might struggle to obviously make something yeah. out of themselves. Yeah, exactly. Especially especially if you think about it, like how much time and effort they would have put into it. Like it would have been like the same for them as it was for me. You know? That was probably all they wanted to do. And then once you're told, oh, you can't be here anymore, they've got to find either another club or something else to do. So... Yeah, it would have been different. So what you see, so you said obviously from that re, um, return and release point, that's when you knew that like, yeah, cool. Yeah. So before that, yeah, there wasn't actually. So before that, there wasn't actually like anything else that you were like, oh, I might want to be that when I grow up. Um, no, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there was anything else specifically, you know. But at the same time, I wouldn't say football was like my world if you know what I mean like it wasn't like the be all and end all but like and it was probably like I said like after that that point when I was like yeah this is this is what I'm doing so yeah, yeah. that's calm man so yeah, going man. up through the ranks of Nottingham Forest Academy like was it all like flying so now you're going through like under 14s under 15s under 16s were you always the guy like were you always playing week in week out like how was that um, I, I did, I played, I did play a lot when I was like, when I was like at that age group. Yeah, that wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was the guy, you know, we had like a really good team even back then, you know, um, mm. like we had, we had a few ballers and stuff like that, but I think, and I was, I'd probably say I was about under 14s when I first started playing up, um, with the olders and that, um, so yeah, that was, that was like, when you know, like when you start playing up, that's when you feel like, yeah, okay, like I'm one of the better ones. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you feel like I'm good enough to go play up with things like, like with the older lot and that. So that was probably, that was probably like a big deal for me, like in terms of like my confidence and that. Mm. So when, yeah. so when obviously you got that first like England call up, the England camp around that like, under 15s and that, like, that, yeah. you, did you expect that? Were you expecting that? Or how did that nah. happen? Nah, genuinely, genuinely, I I didn't expect it. I like because we had we had Arvin in the year above us, right? And yeah. Arvin Arvin had gone to England, and like that mm. was like I think he was like the first one, you know, like from the academy, like either in a long time or ever. So like yeah. that was like a big shot, and then like you I, and Alex, didn't... yeah. Then me and Alex, and and there's a funny story, right? Me when <laughs> we got we got told. Wait, did we, we go? Was... Did we go to the same camp? I think we did. I think we did. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we did. Yeah. Yeah. I think we did because it was the one at Loughborough, innit? Yeah. 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 Um, and there was, what was it? And um, yeah. So we did, we trained and everything. This was because obviously it was in summer. 
Mm. We trained and everything. And um, after the training session, the coach pulls us aside and he's like, he was like, um, how, how do you guys think you've played like in this, this last season, stuff like that? And he was like, and we were both like, yeah, we, we think we've done pretty well, stuff like that. Um, and he was like, yeah, we think so as well. And England obviously did as well. And they want you to go to their, um, like the introduction camp, you know, the, like yeah, the training. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, when we found out, yeah, like they gave us the letters and that. And after he told us, when we were walking back to the change, changing rooms, we didn't even, <laughs> we didn't even, we didn't even say a word to each other. Like we, were, we didn't even say a word. Like we, we had the letters, but and the coach was behind us, and he was like, "You, you know, you guys can be happy about it. You know, like this is a big deal. Like, and me and Alex, we were silent the, from the way to the pitch to the change. We didn't say anything to each other. Right? Like." <laughs> It was almost as if we was in shock, but yeah, that was that was pretty. What? So you might were gassed or nothing? I think now nah, we were gassed, yeah, we were gassed, but we wanted to be composed as well, innit? Mm. So we so we tried not to we tried not to show like how excited we were, but nah, it was. I remember that that was um, yeah, that was that was a big that was a big moment to be told like yeah, we think you're good enough to play for England, so yeah. That's good, man. Now. Uh... The whole experience was was good, man. Yeah, definitely. Hey, did we play? Which game did we play together in? Um, I think we went to the same one when we played against Turkey. Yeah, we did that one. Um, the one when we went to Scotland on the 16s. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember we that. We did that one. As well. Um, but yeah, that was yeah. We had some good moments in England camps, man. No, it's nostalgia. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So what? It, was a lot, so, it doesn't feel as long as what it is, bro. It was actually quite a long time ago when you think Oh, that was like the first England under 15 camp. That was like, what, four years ago? Four or five years ago now? Five years, bro. That's crazy. Crazy. Mm. Getting old. <laughs> Trust me. So what? When you obviously get that England call up from there, did it? So obviously you being, you and Alex being the... The, like maybe like the second ones from the academy getting recognized by England. Like did did your yeah. did your status at the club like take off from there? They start pushing you more, all of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like you know, we got like there was definitely like as soon as we got like that call up, that was probably like the standards that we that were expected from us probably like rose a little bit. You know, like because mm-hmm. not 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 because like. The call up, not specifically because the call up came, but because like you know, they didn't, they probably didn't want it to get to our heads, you know. So like, yeah, they they made they made sure that we we kept our feet on the ground and things like that. But um, yeah, the standards that was expected from us definitely definitely rose once that came. Nice, mad. That's good. That obviously they did that, so you guys didn't get too big time. Yeah, obviously, definitely, man. You guys playing, obviously, you and Alex playing for, obviously, England, being at Nottingham Forest, you guys doing your team playing up. Like, there was a point yeah. in time where you guys were, like, bare clubs are on you, everything, yeah. this and that. Like, how, how did that feel? It being, was... a rising, being a rising baller. <laughs> um, it, it was, like, a bit, I don't know, like, it felt good, you know, because that's, like, obviously, like, no one wants to like sound arrogant or anything like that but having like that type of attention on you it's a good feeling you know like yeah. it means you're doing something right in it but um I think it was a big deal in terms of like what it meant it meant like we were playing well it meant people thought we were good players thought we had like potential to do like well for them and things like that but at the same time you know it was also not a target on our backs but you know it meant that we had to make sure everything we did, everything that we did was right. So there was obviously a little bit of pressure that came with it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, the, and that's, that's the thing most people don't see. Yeah. They, yeah. they, just, they just see that, oh, you got bear clubs on you, this guy is yeah, so yeah, yeah. Exactly. Especially, especially being like, only when you're like, what, 15, 16 at the time, you know, like you don't, you're not really taught like how to deal with stuff like that. Um, 
at that type of age so like yeah it was it was definitely like new obviously it was a good feeling but obviously like there was pressure that came with it as well mm. yeah so what 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 helped you what like helped you not let that get to your head um probably just i think it helps that alex was there as well so like obviously we played for the same team went to the same school things like that so it helps like that we were both i knew that he was in the same situation as I was and he knew that I was in the same situation as he was in as well. So mm. um, that that definitely helped. Um, but also I'd say like the fact that the coaches that we had, like they were, we had like a, or at least I think so anyway, like there were decent coaches that managed to keep like our feet on the ground and stuff like that. So, so yeah, there was definitely... Definitely, like those two things, I'd say were probably the biggest, biggest deal. Yeah, that's hard. That's calm. Yeah, man. <laughs> so how did it? So how did it get to the point of you obviously deciding to obviously leave the club that you were at since like yeah. the age of nine, going mm. abroad, away from obviously all your friends. Yeah. Um, How did I that think, come about? I mean, it kind of it kind of came about like so. This was this was about the same time as scholars. Um, so like everyone was getting offered their scholars and stuff like that at this time, and I'd had I'd had interest from like a couple of clubs in England. Um, so like I went to visit them stuff like that, and it was it was really it was like really cool like just seeing because obviously I was in Cat Two in it, so. Mm. Obviously, like the facilities that we had were obviously going to be different to what like you would have had at Chelsea and mm. what like other clubs would have had at Cat One. Um they were enticing you, man. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like giving all them promises and um, but now nah, I think when I think when Leipzig, like I think they were just like kind of like they didn't kind of expect me to like want to go there you know but they just said to my agent like if he wants to come and have like have a look and stuff like that like he kind of like we're interested in him blah 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 so mm. like it would it would have been stupid to not go you know like you want to yeah, like, know what all your options are you want to know what all your options are um so so that's like, a crazy experience yeah definitely because that was i was i was like 16 at the time and this was like when i first went to visit this was like before like GCSEs season that you know so like that yeah, was yeah. right in the middle of that um so like we went to visit them and at the time like their their team so to speak was like Leipzig Leipzig itself is like it's a really young team you know like if you look mm. at the first team you hardly see anyone older than like 26 something like that you know like it's a like really young team like they love youth um so like that was obviously like a big thing for me being a young player um and yeah that's kind of like how that came around we just went to visit spoke stuff like that and yeah that was it was once I went to visit and saw like the facilities and that it was game over to be honest with you so so what did you did you train there you check where you're going to be staying this and that that yeah what so made what, you oh yeah got you what they what they had is like they they have like rooms on campus in it so like mm. they'll have so like there must have been about 50 rooms or something where like the under 17s it would have been the under 17s would have stayed in and obviously some of the under 19s as well so like they showed they showed me around them they showed me like what the facilities were and also like they showed like how like how they develop players you know like in terms of like you know the coaches things like that like what the mm. coaches have done like the players that are there right now you know it was like because there was a really like talented they've got a really talented academy you know so that was like another big thing as well being able to play with top Good players, players yeah something that you want to do like like all the time so that was another big reason to why I chose, chose to go there so you didn't have like an issue with like the language barrier or anything Nah, nah, because I did, um, I, I I, never really felt like that would be like a big deal, you know, like, mm-hmm. I, like learning a language to me is something like, 
that I've always wanted to do anyway. So like that kind of like helped help me decide where I wanted to go. Like, and also I didn't find it too difficult like learning one. So yeah, I'd, I'd done Spanish at GCSE like, and I found that easy. Um, okay, <laughs> I did Spanish. <laughs> um and I was like well you know I know I I know I can do it it's just like mm. up to me like, if I'm like going to do it you know so, to, yeah. I hear yeah, it like, but it's mad because obviously at the same time obviously you went around I had the opportunity to obviously go abroad so I went mm. to I went to Italy in it with um yeah, yeah. Milan yeah but, but the thing is like I enjoyed the tree and that but I just I just felt like I wasn't ready to go. I wasn't ready to move abroad yeah. and that. So yeah. I don't know, like it's mad obviously the way you're saying that. But yeah, back then yeah. I just feel like I just wasn't I wasn't ready. Like, I don't think I'll be able to hack it like there away from yeah. home. And mm-hmm. Obviously the way they how like, how was that? How was the experience like? How did you cope like being away from home um, after every day? I, I enjoyed it to be honest with you like I I enjoyed it because it wasn't like it wasn't like we were like I was thrown in like the deep or anything like that like because like I said I was living like on on campus in the academy so it wasn't like you know I had to cook for myself had to clean I didn't have to do like anything like that you know um so like it wasn't I didn't feel like I had to do as much as what other people might have had to do if they were going to move away you know okay um, so they made it easier for you. yeah it was made it easy oh, like you know to, like, like living on living on the academy you know like with the other players as well like one that will like help you get to know your teammates um off the pitch as well like living all together stuff like that like you're almost like roommates and mm. um then like you your meals are done for you stuff like that like if you ever have like a injury or problem like you can literally just go downstairs to the physios and like you can talk to them about it if you want to do like any extra training or gym or anything like that you can just go into the facilities just like that so it was like pretty yeah it was pretty easy to like adapt to it um because it wasn't and like the language thing as well like they made it easy like a lot of the players obviously a lot of the players spoke English at the start anyway so that Mm. that helped but also like I, I managed to learn quickly because like the coaches, they would only speak to me in German. So like, I had to make sure that I under- understood what they were saying, which meant like I had to take my lessons seriously and things like that. And also being, a, if everyone around you is speaking German, like you're going to pick up like a few words and stuff like that, like eventually. So yeah, it was, it was a good transition. That sounds, I think. That sounds live, man. Yeah, it was, it was. Sounds lit. But it's so mad because obviously not many not many young players obviously have that experience of obviously going abroad. Mm. Obviously, we've seen that like, people like before you, like Sancho. Yeah. And then obviously you from you, you and Nonny from our age group, like. Yeah. Mad like how like how did obviously those next two years go? Like footballing wise, off the pitch wise, how was that? Um, I'd say off the off the pitch, I think it went like really well, you know, like the good thing about it was like I managed to make friends like pretty quickly I didn't I didn't feel like I was like lonely at any point or anything like that you know I didn't feel like like homesick or anything but at the same time you know like and at the same time like if I had like a weekend off or something they were easy about it like they would say yeah go home spend time stuff like that the coach the coaches were really helpful as well you know they were like what what I would do is if I had a weekend off I would train because training was in the afternoons, I would train Friday afternoon. Mm. I'd be allowed to fly Friday night sometimes. Then obviously Saturday, Sunday at home, and they would they would let me fly on Monday. So like I'd I'd manage to like I'd miss the Monday training sessions sometimes um, yeah. because Mondays like it was that's just, like, that's uh, lit though. Like they, yeah. so what if you come so. back and forth to your family often? Yeah, yeah. yeah when no, was, that's when really I, good, man. When I had the time. So like that that definitely made it easier as well. Um, and then and on the pitch as well I think it was pretty good like the training session thing like I learned like a different way of like how they play football because like Leipzig you know it's like energy you know they they want you to be aggressive they want you to be fast like they like everything they are everything about them is just like direct but not like not yeah. like long ball direct but you know like play quickly direct you know mm-hmm. um, 
No, that's good. It's like a whole, like whole new experience from obviously the English okay. academy system. That's that's yeah. real good to have in your, mm. in your obviously in your career. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it there. So obviously, like, how was it going on loan? Like, being yeah, like going on loan over there. Like, did you actually did you experience like any like discrimination or like? feeling left out because you see you're foreign from a foreign country um nah not not when I was in Germany like in Germany like every everyone I didn't like experience anything like in Germany um like everyone around me like was like like they were good people you know so they they like made sure they looked out for me stuff like that they made sure like like I didn't feel like as if I was like lonely or anything like that um I didn't like I didn't really suffer any discrimination um which is that was that was one thing I was like a little bit nervous about when I first mm. moved to be friends. it's obviously like Leipzig you know it's it's in East Germany like that's one thing um yeah. and but I think the thing that helped is that like it's an up-and-coming city and it's quite like a young city you know like even the team like the team was only founded like 12 years ago or something you know um mm-hmm. But like it's an up and coming team, so I think that helped. You know, like not there wasn't too many people that were like old fashioned around or anything like that. Yeah, um, that's good to hear, man. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like I was like lonely or anything like that. No. Hmm. Yeah. So during like during the like period, obviously of born and like, did you have any like struggles or setbacks? Um, I probably yeah, I'd say. That was that was probably the time where injuries probably hit me hardest. Um, mm. So, and yeah, like I said, it was it was never like one big one, you know. It would always be like the little ones, you know. Like, yeah, say yeah. if you yeah, say like if you once you're getting in a rhythm, you know, like then something will happen, and then you're out for like a week, and then you come back, and then something will happen again, and you're out for two weeks, and it was just like a little bit annoying and especially especially my last season at Leipzig you know like that was really annoying because we were we were in the youth cup and stuff like that so obviously that was another another competition like that we wanted to like do really well in and things like that but I think I must have missed like three or four games to like injury or something and the the thing about it was like they were all different injuries as well so that was that was annoying but because like that would like the youth league is something an opportunity to like express yourself like it's an international stage in it so yeah like, injuries oh. are injuries are too annoying man yeah but that's yeah. That, that's obviously the behind the scenes of the journey that people don't see yeah yeah exactly oh man so what so if not for those injuries do you think like you'd be in around that like, the first team getting games there like on the bigger stage um if I'm honest if I'm honest I probably I probably don't think so because the way that the way that everything the way that was like the club was being run like like part of the reason in me leaving was because like everyone that was there when I'd signed like after like a year like they'd all like moved Left. on and stuff like oh, that. yeah so, like, that's the story yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah when that happens it's so peak like right? yeah exactly and that's like, that's football man yeah mm, exactly like the Half. I think the only people the only people that were there when I signed were like the like academy director like and the under 17 coach apart from that like it was and like obviously like a few people like behind the scenes as well but like mm. apart from that you know there wasn't really to, there were like the club changed a lot like in in that year that I signed um when it and when it changes a lot like that, it's peak mm. because obviously yeah. a new set of people now and yeah, they have yeah, all their yeah. opinions and they want to yeah. bring in their players and they're exactly. like, oh, who, who brought this guy in? Like, I didn't bring yeah, this guy yeah, yeah. Exactly, They don't really exactly. care about that player that they didn't bring in. Yeah, you get? Exactly. And that's how, that's what happens behind the scenes that like, people don't see. So People don't understand like how football actually works. But mm. yeah, that's that was... So if I'm honest, probably I probably, I probably wouldn't be like around the first team um because just because of the way like everything everything turned out um but you know like at the same time you know 
um who knows like if you play every anyone knows like if you played well stuff like that um with the like with the injuries that was really annoying but if i had played well I've, especially in the youth league as well because that's like the biggest com- you're play that's the competition you're playing against the best players mm. um like so yeah but if i'm being honest probably not i don't think so i don't think so hear it hear it yeah that's the thing, like, with football, yeah. it's a thing where you could be sick here, but it's all about that having that opportunity and having those, obviously, people who are ready to obviously support your development and give you that, those chances. Yeah. That's the thing. There's an element, yeah. there's obviously an element of luck to it. Mm, of course, of course, yeah. But now you're back in ends, back in England. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I am, man, man. How do you feel about the... the, the Man, I'm looking forward to it. I am because, like, being back is kind of like you know being back to like what I'm used to. Kind of you know, like obviously I'd been abroad for like a couple of years, but mm. now you know, like I'm back in the runs. I'm used to like how English clubs do things. You know, like what training sessions are like, what gyms like. You know, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to like getting getting started properly. That's good, man. Soon come. Soon come first team debut, all of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's obviously I've got a lot of work to do and stuff like that, but yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Wow, that's good, man. But obviously, the aim of this podcast is obviously seeing, like, giving people an insight into who, like, who we are beyond football. So, yeah. who who are you beyond football? Um, I'd say. If you asked anyone that was like close to me, like one of my my friends or something like that, they'd probably say that I'm like quite a relaxed person, you know, like I'm not, I don't really stress about too much. Um, like I like, I try to be like positive when I can, stuff like that. Mm. Um, like even, and I'm like, I'm a lighthearted kind of person, you know, so like I won't take, I won't take things too seriously. But at the same time, you know, like, if it's time to work, then I'll I'll work. But yeah, that's that's probably like the type of person I am. That's probably the type of person I'd say I am. No, yeah, that's good, man. So what's your identity like beyond the game? Because obviously we heard about like guys who are like obviously not in well, obviously during that retain and release program where they've gone through the system and they're like they've like football's all they've had like through the years and now it's taken away from them. They don't have that identity, so they feel like there's no hope. Like, what, what's yeah. that identity you think for you? Um, it's a tough question. Say, yeah, it, is, comes it on. is a tough one. It is a tough one. Um, I'd say probably, I'd probably say like, man, that is a tough question, bro. Uh, <laughs> And this is um, this is what I'm trying to obviously highlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's important. It's important. I'd, yeah, I'd say if I wasn't, if I didn't like have football around me and things like that, I'd say to describe myself, I'd probably say like I'm a I'm like a people person, you know, where like I I probably I look out for I look out for others as much as like I look out for self, for myself, you know, like I'm not I'm mm. I'm self. Anything like that. I look out for other people. Um, I try to like, I try to like get involved. I'm not afraid of like trying new things, you know. Like, mm-hmm. I think I think that's probably that's probably part of the reason why I went to Germany because I'm not afraid of trying new things because that's like my personality, you know. Like, that's I'm good. the type of person. You have to yeah, be brave. Type, you have to be brave yeah, to yeah, do that. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm the type of person, you know. Like, instead of not wanting to try something because it's new and I, and it's like it's foreign you know like I don't I don't understand it I'm the type of person to go you know what let me try this and if I enjoy it then good and if I don't enjoy it then 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 I didn't enjoy it and move, I just move, move on move, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good man. that's good so if, if it was to stop now yeah what would you do what would I do man what would you do if it was taken away from you, what would you if, do? I'd what I'd want to do, I'd mm. wanna to be honest, something that interests me a little bit is like sports journalism. Mm, like mm. right, 
it because like I, I didn't I, I I enjoyed writing at school like you know like I enjoyed I I enjoyed like a lot of people didn't enjoy school I enjoyed school you know like mm, what grades you got like, what grades um GCSE I got I got an eight a few sevens okay. and a few sixes and a five so what a stars a stars and eights so, uh, like in, in I got like one one A star and like a few A's and stuff like that but yeah, that's calm, I, calm like I said I enjoyed I enjoyed school um I enjoyed school so like if uh, if football was taken away from me I probably want to do something that had to do with like writing or something you know like sports journalism because you know like you're still in and around sport and stuff like that but like yeah you're going to write about it and also like you get to like use your opinions you know like mm. it's not it's not something where oh you have to write about this this and this you can like talk about it from your point of view and something like that so something like that would probably be what I'd what I'd want to do yeah no that's good bro because obviously you having that that shows that you obviously mm. have a vision if it, if it was to take be taken away from you it wouldn't yeah. be a thing where you'd be like oh like what am I gonna do now yeah, yeah exactly, exactly what am I gonna do now oh that's I don't want to do anything else. That like, there's no hope for me. There's no, uh, it's good. Obviously, yeah, you have that. Yeah, exactly. Like some people, you know, like a lot of a lot of people that play football, you know, they will lot purely be focused on football. Like, and and it's not it's not a bad thing, yeah. But oh. at the same time, you know, you've like it's good to be focused on what you want to do. But at the same time, you know, like it's a little bit like naive to not think about what if you know like what what am I going to do if it doesn't and work out do you think and that's the thing right like, let's go back to where we started in it yeah. the the marketing sense and the business sense of the football system it makes you mm. think that obviously that discipline that's ingrained with you from mm. such a young age it makes you think that yeah. uh, it doesn't really it doesn't really allow um young footballers to think of that what if but that yeah, what if is important exactly exactly like and like you were saying before, you know, like the the smarter football, like smarter footballers, you know, they will they will all like have something else, you know, they'll all be doing something like, you know, the ones like at the very top might be doing like investing, things like that, you know, like yeah. other ones, like there's a lot, like there's a lot of footballers now that are doing like like what you like what you're doing, you know, like doing studying on the side, you know, like a lot of people are doing that now as well because they know that. It's not Once for football, it's not for the lifetime, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Football fo- a footballer like they retire like what like mid 30 something like that. Like, what yeah. are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for the rest you of your life? Do this. Who are you, you beyond to, football? Exactly. You need to do something. So yeah, like that's that's why a lot of people like need to understand that you have to have something else. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be something like you know that will make you money or something it just has to be something you enjoy like mm. that you can do after, word, 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 word. after you finish football or if you have to stop for some reason but yeah exactly bro and obviously hopefully everyone that's listening everyone that's watching obviously highlights that obviously the yeah. obviously the elite players a lot of my teammates everyone they don't really understand that yeah but it's good obviously the more and more we do this podcast obviously hopefully it blurs and the more people like like get that understanding of having an identity beyond the game of football, because obviously we don't mm. want that situation where with um, Jeremy Weston and that mm. where we don't want that to happen again. Yeah, so it's important to uh, have conversations like this. Obviously, hearing that from you, obviously give the younger generation and other people they will yeah. see that it's important. Mm. Yeah, man. Uh, been good bro hearing about your story man i hope you guys who are listening get insight into obviously the life of a young footballer moving abroad how it is being in the academy system from a young age and just the importance of having an identity beyond football bro just thanks for jumping on yeah no problem man it's good to good to let people know what i've been through and obviously good to have this conversation as well good bro soon I'll probably hopefully we play against each other soon, eh? Yeah, man, that would be that would be fun. That would be fun, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I remember back in training in England days. No, 
No, I'm on it. I don't, I'm not trying to let anyone score me. You don't like losing, bro. You do not like losing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's been good, bro. Yeah, man. Uh,